I'm a Charizard fan. You know, I am, I'm basic. I'm a basic bitch like that. The far from basic, folks, is, of course, the fearless drafting system. Game two, WELGD. Have to see whether LGD can piece together something a little better. I'm looking for carries in the top lane first and foremost. Yep. I don't want to see Birdall put on engaged tank duty again. He needs to do damage. WE on the other side, they won't have themselves the Corky and the Marco, which they used very well in game one. So what can they use to find a similar composition in game two to be that clinical with? Eyes on. The band's coming on through. Shouldn't surprise people too much, I think. It'll be interesting, of course, whether LGD side they need to ban the Skarnix. Of course, they can't play it. Um, looks like there's a... Oh, that's on your end, I was thinking. What happened there? Uh, yes, it is. Way is instead the ban. The Way would want to first pick that Scar. And of course, they're under no pressure to, because, of course, it's not like LGD can take it away. Okay. And instead, it's the Rumble pickup, which is certainly a potent champion right now still, especially with some yep. of the item changes. The Fated Ashes feels really good on Rumble. And I will say, um, this is unlikely to be flexed towards Mark in that bot side. He won't get himself that Leona again. It wouldn't surprise me if he just goes towards the Nautilus and just has both of his kind of priority support engaged champion picks. Um, LGD, what are they going to answer this with? Kepler was a decent um, Callista player, but again, for me, I'm really looking towards that top lane. I want to see, um, can you play something like the Twisted Fate into the Rumble? It's a harder matchup, but can he do it and make it, make it work? Uh, I want to see him doing more damage. And I think if there's a player you'd trust to take more of a skill matchup and try and come out on top, it would be Birdle. Cassante can manage the Rumble, but I feel like Rumble early on with those Harpoons really makes Cassante sweat in a way few champions yeah. do in lane. At least it's a flanking threat with some solo potential. Um, I think that the Skarner just doesn't have enough solo kill potential for Birdle, effectively. Cassante at least can still do Cassante things. You lose out the matchup individually against Rumble, but you can impact team fights and you can still wave clear fine and keep Rumble away from actually hitting the tower. Rumble can't get those free turret plates on the other side. We haven't seen that much Lucian being picked up um, in summer so far. The energized item changes have removed his priority just a little bit, but it will be LP and Mark going towards uh, the Lucian Nami. I, I have to say, I'm a big fan of LP going uh, going towards the Lucian, though. He is a very talented player of the pick. He is, Even yeah. back um, this time last year when he was on... Um, heck, was that when they were on LNG? He was very, very good at using the first few levels of the game to gain an advantage in the first few levels and then use that to combo up with his jungler. It's one of the biggest things I noted about him back then. So CFWE can do that again with a jungler which can benefit off that lane pressure. I feel like as well the oh, new PTA Camille's changes support. feel pretty good. That, But that is Camille locked in and you're right, it's likely Camille's support. It is good with the cholesterol. You know it's into the Lucian army and there's no poppy or anything right now to deny it. In fact, I wonder whether we'll see a poppy ban pretty swiftly here to try and Make well, sure that won't come and help mitigate the Camille. That's a point. Hung is actually a poppy jungler. That you are. You're actually completely right in mentioning that one. Of course, it's not going to be in the lane, which uh, you know, courtesy which of would Mickey. Which would normally X. be the, the big I one. Have, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, I'm still so perplexed that Carrier wanted to pick Camille support into Poppy. That was. It was a bizarre choice. Like, Jesus Christ, he played lad. it quite well. <laughs> he played it quite well considering, but yeah. it was so hard. Just like wow, you've just put the difficulty onto. It's it's like you run into the first boss of the game, and it's millennia. <laughs> Yeah, that was a nasty one. So, what are we banning out now? Um, we don't have any magic damage really from the side of LGD right now, but there's no tank on the other side, so they don't have to care about that so much. Um, they played the Talia themselves, they're gonna ban it away. I think that's something that you'll notice about the Fearless Drafting style, is that once you have played something, you are more likely to ban it, because it's only banning it for the enemy team. You've already pseudo banned it for yourself by playing it before. Yeah, exactly that, and that's why, as we said, if we get towards Game 3s, you end up with some Theoretically spicier drafts on the cards, especially if uh, teams have got that. And there's that poppy. I'm a god. Look at that. My, my wow. brain is too big. Sam, they have Aren't three. I great, Alex? Wow, they have three dash champions. Let's ban the yeah, two like, anti dash champions in the is game. It, isn't it great? Aren't I smart, Alex? Um, don't don't answer that if it's going to so be. So we're getting mean. through to our last ban from <laughs> WWE. Uh, so they're banning out some engaged jungle stuff that can give. Wow, that's different though. That is very, very different. Okay. I wonder, okay, okay, I think the logic is they wanted to take away an AD mid laner from Haichao that would unlock an AP jungler from Meteor so you can have the AD AP. I think you're fine to actually go double AP if yeah, you particularly wanted to at this point, though. Uh, he's been terrorizing solo queue as well. The items have been so good for Akshan. Right. He has been really, really difficult to manage. Um, I mean, there's still the Jace so, available, though. So Jace doesn't push, well, yeah. doesn't have the lane kill threat like the Akshan. And if you were afraid of picking like something which is a little weaker in lane, 
Um, then the Archon could have punished that. The Jace can't punish that early, at least. Now, what's Fofa gonna go towards? The LeBlanc's gone, you've got no Tristana, the Huey's gone. A lot of the big mages that would normally do well into mages, into Jace are gone. You're looking for something that can... Yeah, the Orion is not bad here. Uh, I feel like that'd be better in laning phase versus that Jace, at least. Um, but maybe a little too immobile versus the Camille. Maybe that's why they're going towards the Azir instead, just saying, look, can't really have the immobile mage against this composition. So, um, obviously he's not gonna get picked, but for those at home, 52.5%, nearly 53% win rate for Akshan. Rank 5 out of every champion in mid lane. 15% oh, right. ban rate. Like, this guy is, like, he is S plus chance. Okay, fair play, fair play. I can understand that one. So, what did we say before about LP and kind of reminiscing about his time on previous teams? Very good at pushing in bot lane and comboing up with junglers early into the game with the Lucian and the Lucian Nami. Now, Shin Sao is a jungler which can leverage off of that very well. Problem is, Shin Sao is not great into AP farming junglers all the time. Now, you can get towards Akarthas and make him uh, um, feel pretty bad about things, but if any of these lanes starts winning for LGD, I think you're going to see points where potentially Hung is going to get caught out when he looks to shut down this Shin, uh, this uh, this Karthus, which he needs to do so. Karthus with the uh, Camille kind of all inning yep. from the support role and the Jace having long range poke as well. I think this could be a Karthus 1v9 game. Oh, yeah. There's so many ways to set up for this Karthus to blow whoever is in the cage up very, very swiftly indeed. Got a lot of combos here and not a lot of ways realistically to mitigate it. The uh, Crescent Guard can help. There's not really that much else to try and mitigate it. No one's really going to be buying Locket freely, which is often the anti carthas tool. So we load closer and closer towards that rift for game two. WE, they came in as favorites, and in game one, they showed exactly why. Very clinical at finishing that game. I think that this uh, draft is... A little harder for them to potentially do the same. They don't have that Maokai to be that very easy go button from the jungle. I think their engage will be a little hard to come by, but they do have some very, very strong duelists and individual lanes to make up for that all the same LGD. They have a bit more of a combo based composition. Again, they need to not fall too far behind though for the combo to become irrelevant. Precisely it. And of course we have seen it when Camille's fall behind. It looks a lot uglier. And of course, if you can, Get that Lucian Nami towards mid game. No one really on the other team is going to enjoy dealing with the culling outside of maybe Cassanta if they get far enough ahead. And certainly find yourself some advantage in the mid game just fine. Either team snowballs particularly hard. It's going to be very difficult for the other to s stall the snowball. Once again, we head on to the rift for a game two. Another skybox with a wild looking yeah. camel in the so, frame folks, there. So um, every one of the arenas has a different skybox. So when you see a different skybox, you're in a different arena. Now with WWE, this is the home arena. This is what it looks like, the first one. LNG you have theirs in Suzhou, WWE in Xi'an. You have NIP in Shenzhen, and then you have JDG in Beijing. And then the, the regular LPL neutral ground is in Shanghai. By the way, all of the teams will be playing at least one of their series against every team in Shanghai. Um, for teams with a home arena, they play a home and an away game. So you'll get to see both all of these teams across China um, for bits and pieces. But yeah, when you get to see the different skies, you'll realize you're in a bit of a different location too. <clears throat> exactly it. They're looking for a little bit of a lane swap here as well, theoretically. LP and Wayward up here. If Birdol face checks something here, this could be a very ugly moment for Cassante! There we go! Birdol, very swift to try and run away. It's burnt the ghost, trying to get far enough away. The autos continue to fly, but they cannot get more than the ghost and a footwork okay. start. So this is going to be a lane swap going through the lane itself. LGD put so many wards down to try and spot out a lane swap coming through, but they can't manage to stop the Lucian army going towards top side. I think that this is important. The first level one, level two, very, very strong for the double hail of blades coming out for Kepler and Jinja. Birdolt solo HP. He can't really get towards um, sharing XP on the other side of the map just yet. That's why he's going to go regen up to full HP, walk back towards this bot lane, and uh, with the changes, maybe do something else there. Wayward walking in, has the E double stacked, wants to hit something onto Hai Chao if he can, get some poke down there. Can't quite land the first one. Hai Chao, I don't know what he's doing with that one, but at least he'll get out without taking damage. That's the plan. Gets away. A little bit of an interesting moment as Wayward is in mid lane, but that's what you do sometimes when in the lane swap scenarios, just try and be obnoxious somewhere else on the map. There's decided Hai Chao is the person to be that too. <laughs> Lands an Electro this Harpoon. Is honestly, one of the funniest things about lane swaps, and people forgot this for a while, is that um, mid lane is somewhat on an island when it comes to lane swaps, but it does sometimes mean that you can walk into mid lane 
in your passing between sides of the map, you have really strong level 1 top lane champions, they just come and just bully out the mid laner anyway. We've seen TF level 1 gold cards pulled oh, on repeat so there. We've seen the double electro harpoon, we've seen Camille's fly in for a level 1 hookshot. It just kind of happens. Well, this happens, remember folks that, um, uh, top lane turret is much harder to kill than bot lane. What we typically see is one extra bot lane plate going over compared to top lane, and then by the time they go in for the next crash beyond that, uh, the other team would swap towards top lane, kind of return back to their natural state, because at that point they had level 3, level 4, and some of the more dangerous level 1, level 2 bot lane matchups kind of uh, leave by that point. Jinja at level 2 has hookshot, hasn't leveled up anything else right now. Fofo's pushing up. High charge, low HP, but there's still kill threat here. Oh, they just went a little too far. Decides to back away. You can see with the flash hookshot angle, if you remember back in the days of Camille Jungle in like season seven, oh, you'd I do just do seven. that where you hookshot, oh. hookshot flash. Sorry, season eight, you're right. Hookshot flash out of the jungle onto whoever was unwittingly in mid lane. Another um, point of order as well to update people is I think this will fizzle out as well. Meteors. Meteors okay, actually theoretically. Okay, Junja is out. I think he otherwise um, hung okay. jump on him. So, with lane swaps, you're looking at gold and CS. Okay, no, we actually are going to get a We surely get a fight now, Junja, oh, yeah. going forwards. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay, well, that, well, okay. We got a use of abilities, Alex. Wow, Does that fantastic. count as a fight? Great. Uh, well, I mean, technically, indeed, there was damage taken. I think I'd call that a small thing. Anyway, um, point of order. Um, we have changes to the overlay, we have the individual gold advantages towards uh, the bot side. We also have XP advantages beneath champion portraits as well. In lane swaps, experience is a big, big thing to track. Oh, Luckily huh. in this game, we do see that both top laners um, are kind of even on XP. If the Rumble gets behind an XP versus the Cassante, that's when actually the matchup can turn around a fair bit. One of the big things here is, of course, you've got much less CS than you will do against your bot laners too, which means that... um. You're not going to be the same kind of like super 1v9 rumble yeah. as early into the game because you're just behind the pace of the game. Yeah, I think that's fair. And on, ch on certain champions, they, they just become dramatically less useful or, so, or, or at least different to how you're used to seeing them. A Kazante that's gotten no gold... You know, 15 minutes isn't the same uber tank you get used to. And yeah, it'll turn into that later on in the game, sure. Similarly, things like the Rumble, it's like, well, you're still at only half an item. That equalizer didn't hit the way I was hoping it would. Um, but you're still going to be, you know, theoretically useful, especially relative to your opposition number, if you can get the leads you have. It's just to a different level and mitigating and managing the kind of Burying power levels isn't something that teams have entirely gotten used to yet, despite it being around for a, few, a patch or so. Yeah, sometimes it takes watching um, a couple of key teams in the world to kind of get to grips with some of the big changes that come through. You know, weirdly, last year it was actually OMG that did a lot of the innovating yeah, right. within within the league. Um, the Such way combos, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Particularly when everyone was playing bot side, they found a way to play top side and they changed the way that the meta was played, which uh, a lot of people learned from. Uh, but the way I referred to them was your coach's favorite, your favorite coach's favorite team because they yep. showed them how to play some different styles in a meta where everyone thought that bot lane was the uh, the only thing to do. I'm really looking to see who's going to be that trailblazer. We've already seen a lot of variety. Meteor going bot side has six already. Good amount of damage. Ooh, oh, he's dead to all. back is foul. It's over. He's going to get away to safety and press the R button. Goodbye, Mark. He's dead. Meteor comes down, gets himself a Dark Harvest stack, happy with that one, and of course gets himself the kill as well. One of the big problems with playing stuff like these early impact junglers, Lee Sin, Shin Sao, is that in a meta of AP farming junglers, which as soon as they get towards the Fated Ashes and then towards their first items, just hyper, hyper accelerate beyond the game, is that your window of time in the current meta is actually very small mm. to shut them down. Hung hasn't done anything to stop Meteor from farming, hasn't done anything to stop them getting towards bot lane there either. Goes in, already a level and a half up on the Shinsau as it comes through to it. Flashing forward Flash. from Shinsau, but he, oh, you can no. see how but this is it, you can see how desperate he is because he knows he needs to do something about it, but that leads to desperation mistakes like that. I don't think it was tracking Jinjao either. So, like, he goes forward and goes, oh, the Camille's here. Never mind, I can't follow this up. So, the Flash is burned. Yeah. Raptors are lost so, again. He's still got a topside jungle yeah. to clear. This is looking dicey. This is an important thing, right? So, taking a step into collect the casting perspective here, too. That is a fucking int, folks. That is a mistake. <laughs> now, it now, is. Now, and, 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 and it is rightful to say, why the hell would you waste your Flash like that? But you step into the player's shoes and you say, well, he has to do something about this Carthus before Carthus gets to, like, one item 
and has already got the level disadvantage. You understand where the desperation comes from, even if it is a mistake. It's actually kind of important to track both, because it can make some things, which are, you know, rightfully called out as bad plays, uh, have a lot more context for why they happen in the first place. And this is likely going to be a Blackfire Torch. Um, I suppose it could be the Leandries as well, but I was wondering whether it's it would be complete on Blackfire, but, Black but, but, but decides to go towards the Sork Pen Boots early, because actually the thing is, it's only 2,800 gold. It's a cheap item. It's mm. not expensive. I also think um, in this game too, there's very little engage coming in from WE, so if you have that extra oh, yeah. movement speed to outstep the Equalizer and the Tidal Wave, you're very safe to fight, and that changes the game for Meteor. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing he has to be seriously wary of is potentially getting swept by the Azir, but... Honestly, you've also got to remember, Karthus isn't necessarily against dying as long as it's in the middle of the enemy team. Like, if, if Azir sweeps you to kill you, it's like, well, now I'm just in melee range of the Lucian army and everyone else. This isn't exactly the worst thing to have had happen to me. So, you know, a lot of the engage is limited, and the engage that is there is once he goes, well, this isn't actually that bad for me either. <laughs> Absolutely. So, what's happening now with the rest of the map? Where's the next play coming in? What are we looking at? Dragon has spawned. Of course, we've talked about the importance of getting two early dragons multiple times. It's worth always mentioning that too. Karthus will clear this very, very quickly. Has blue buff as well on the table, so um, really has no issues clearing everything at light speed beyond this point. The top lane matchup is going pretty badly for Birdle. You understand that it's likely not going to be great. Wayward is a talented um, individual kind of laning player, all the same. He's about a thousand gold up, but with the lane swap, he's not really at the same point of power that you could be compa uh, compared to mid lane, for instance. They'll have more gold. They have a lot more CS right now. Oh, pulled in that bot side. Some work there. Bit of a chunk back onto Junja and Kepler and get all that much. And... Uh... Compared to Beitran as well, Meteor's actually had that success on the Karth. So I want to go look it up and thinking, that feels like it might have been a Meteor champion from the past. Um, <laughs> zero and two. So not that great. This is looking a lot better so far. Yeah. <laughs> he's also one and three on Evelyn. So he's played more Evelyn games than Karthus. So, you know, there's that. He's got a better win rate yeah, on that champion. Yeah. But yeah, it, not, not, not exact. I was expecting a little bit more in the back yeah, pocket. There, like, there, there, there are just a couple of players in LPL that have randomly pulled it out. So, Hacker played it a couple of times yeah. in the past. We were talking about it. Who was the player that was five? Um, Beitran. Was it Beitran? It was five. I said Beitran, yeah, yeah. Five and yeah. all. Not anymore. Meteor is going to walk five into one now. I think there's actually a problem here now. I don't think that Hanger has the damage to one shot the Karthus before he also. Oh, no. Well, I think he will kill the Karthus, but I think he will die almost certainly in return if he doesn't have Flash. Um, and if Karthus has Flash himself, because of course, remember that Flash was burned in that desperation kind of uh, panic mm. move earlier. Feels like a Meteor might just be able to play, uh, play that too. Grubs spawning. The LGD trying to stop that six stack. Double oh, trying to control the smoke. Oh! Jinjao goes in, throws down the Hextech ultimatum, doesn't actually get that much value as the Fate Call comes on through. On the other side, the all-out pull by Bernal forces Wayward to flash out. Camille is dead, but look at the HP bars! The barrier is timing out! Wait for the Requiem to begin to fly in a second. Meteor very low, finally falls. Here comes the Requiem. The Not the cleanest kill, but the Shock Blast lands! Kepler steps on forward, trying to get another kill, but now he's very deep, has to flash out of the Aqua Prison. Ends up being, in the end, I think a two for two, because Jinjao died as well. That was a little bit scrappier than I was anticipating. It will not lie to you. 100% agree with you there, buddy, because I think that Jinjo got uh, very, very hypey about going into that play, had the hook shot in, had the cholesterol to be pulled back out, but still gets caught in the middle of the play. We get ourselves, of course, the jungler dead from Meteor, which means he can't smite any of these away just yet, but luckily LGD hold uh, composure, and they managed to force W away. So W will not, I don't even think, get a single extra grub from this one. I can interrupt the back again. So actually, despite the fight going even, they're still going to lose the grubs. So we'll prevent the might spawn, which of course is now at four grubs since MSI. So do keep that in mind if you've not been paying that much attention. Yeah. We'll get the replay so, looking because it was LGD pulled the trigger. wanted to control this choke point. That's what they wanted to do, but they just couldn't hold place there. Jin Zhao has a pretty good uh, jump forward here, but I think this is where it goes too far because you've still got the Nami ult available. You've just used a lot of your defenses and you're not Leona. Uh, so you don't get to kind of be that tanky. Luckily for the side of LGD, they just have way more damage at this point in the game because the Karthus is such a big point. Misses a couple of cues about there. Flashes forward just to kind of get the, uh, the, the defile down on everyone. Luckily, that ult finishes off a kill. Meteor looks for... He bit off a little bit more than he could chew, though. Did just a touch, but still, that's now Blackfire Torch completed. Did get the additional kill with the addition, with the Shock Blast afterwards, so it's still in the end, not the end of the world for LGD. They got the grubs as well. They just don't manage to accelerate the game in a way they were hoping, and the gold lead is still even, guys. It's like that. That is theoretically good news. The Rumbles had a good lane. The Lucian slightly ahead, thanks to 
a little bit of that value from, I believe it must be First Strike and the couple kills. So uh, yeah. that that's something to work with. Of course, First Strike right now, very strong. Throws down another culling, which does hmm. a decent job of chunking so, people out. The, the problem is this Karthus is still giga-fed. Yeah, and the pro I have to say, Karthus is one of the best champions of the game against Lucian too. Because if Lucian ever jumps forward or gets tagged by a, a Wall of Pain, that's effectively fight over. He doesn't really like building Hex Drinker, so, and especially against this composition as well. Mm. We're, we're seeing... The problem with uh, AP farming junglers right now is that everyone wants to build Hex Drinker against them, but the rest of the team is full AD, so they can't really. Uh, and the same definitely applies to these short-range AD carries that love to dance in and out of fights, because it's just, you know, wax you with one skill shot and things go badly after that point. So we'll have to see um, how LP approaches this game. We did say that we liked it. Well, I was saying that I really liked LP's uh, Lucian in the past. I think he's been a very talented player of this pick. He needs to be a core part of this composition to see if WE can close out in a 2-0. Oh, it feels like Meteor right now, though, with the cast in a great position to put LGD even in the series. I mean, that's what his name stands for, right? LP is Lucian player. Right. That's very clever, Sam. That's you. What you did there is you took the two letters and you made yeah, them into I did. an acronym. Exactly. Wow! Incredible. I was <laughs> really hoping you go. Oh, really? And then I get to go. No. And it would have been funny. But no, you didn't. You didn't take the bait. No. Nope. And I'm disappointed in you. Dragon Sport, a good 10 seconds. I feel like there are more important things than our <laughs> brotherly true, squabbles yes. at this point. So sets up coming through right. from LGD. Forced the flash out of Mark. If that Shock Blast had hit, the ult would have come from Meteor afterwards, and that would have effectively been Dragon over. Second Dragon for LGD. It would be the first one for W. They want to stop the two dragon stack, which would allow LGD yeah. to stall out um, around future dragons, even if they did run into some issues. Here we go again. Ultimate's largely all available. A couple of flashes missing. It feels like we're going to get ourselves a proper objective fight. Double opportunity and 1.5 burn items on Meteor make this a very scary proposition. W, do want to play this. Wayward with the equalizer. Not level 11, though. Dragon Burnall. already down. Burnall into the backline. The tidal wave to try and disengage, but into the backline goes the Jinjiao on Camille. Knocked out of the Hextech ultimatum, though, and they've gone too deep. It's kind of over already. And WE bait in the engage and punish it super hard yeah, lgd once again really disrespect the tidal wave of the equalizer which can be a huge turnaround team fight composition from we they don't get onto the carries in the right timing and we lose the dragon but they sweep the fight huge moment for them and now lgd do have that real uh, that realization that they have the two dragons they're likely going to have to give up a couple of dragons now to get some extra gold in pocket, I don't think they're winning these fights straight up. Look at what happens here with particularly Birdall and Hydrocharm mistiming their engage. I think Birdall makes a mistake here. He uses his W to go forward. Cassante's tankiness is basically all in his W right now, folks. He presses the W while you're putting damage into him. It changes the fight. He uses it a little too early, gets into that Nami tidal wave, falls apart beyond that point. So mistakes both from Birdall and Jinjiao, which put LGD in a rough spot. And WE now actually up 2,000 gold, and that's despite what it's felt like. Very good game plans and game play from LGD in terms of getting people mm. the right gold leads. It's kind of falling away in the fights now. And now LP, strong, building towards that second item. Fofo <laughs> picked up a lot of gold. Wayward wait, doing very well. What you said was like, LP together, strong. Strong. <laughs> <laughs> It's just that, that it says, yeah. welcome, welcome to the planet of the whelps. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. I can't remember any quotes from that Rise thing. of the, rise of the I, planet of the well. All I can remember lane. is that one Simpsons thing, which is fantastic, where they just had like a two-minute song and dance about the musical <laughs> Planet of the Apes with Dr. Zaius and everything. I'm not sure he's playing for top lane in this game, but uh, all the same, powerful there. LP, good damage. Does look like a lot of damage indeed. Can do a fair amount of work. Trying to hold on for now. Um, just to hold on. Backing away for now, holding their breath. So far, so good. Towards the Herald we go. The last couple of fights have not been particularly clean from LGD. Kind of to be a bit cleaner with some of the engages, and they're currently just backing yeah. away. They're going to play for mid lane pressure and just I giving this one over see, to WE. You can see that uh, our, 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 our spicy team of Lagandia don't really want to be sat in the river against Boy. the wall. They're going into this again, but the Herald's already gone, go. playing around Birdle as the front line, but they're scared to fight. I think they were really reality checked at that last dragon. You can see how um, poorly they're playing around. They could This mid lane turret, they could have had extra autos on there instead of just trying to go towards a late Herald entrance. I think they're scrambling a bit now, and I think WE have managed to stabilize a lot better now. They're getting to a really strong point of power. LP's going to get towards a oh. big point up to the point, and that's just first strike farming from Wayward. 
Meteor down about half HP from that kind of stings a bit. And you're absolutely right, Azir. Uh, hitting two items. Lucian hitting two items. Rumble hitting two items. Those are some pretty scary points of power. You too Especially... could hit two items if you were on L um, WE. Exactly, you, you could. I mean, fellow citizen. I, 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 I lied about the Azir. I thought the Azir was a little bit further forward than no. the items that they were. It's fine. But the Lucian's hit two items, and that's a big moment. Yeah, Sam, he's actually the only person who's done that so far, so you've like, yeah, had a I mean, like most of the stuff I, I, like, I, I, I'm realising this now, but that's yeah. fine. I think I was, because I, I, the items are dispersed, like, surely they are at this point with the way things have been going. They are going towards two items, yes, guys. Once one. they get to that point, the, the point will be even more I powerful think, Sam, I for think me hitting it early. Now. I think we move yeah. on. Please, yeah, before As, uh, I dig myself okay. any deeper. All right, all right, all right, right. So Dragon's up in a minute. I think LGD, yeah, they've kind of realised, right, we're not re winning right now. My problem is, I actually think with this lead on Wayward, I don't know if stalling the game is even the right call for LGD. Because if Rumble just turns up to any fight yeah. in the future with a 2,000 gold lead, like, you are just you are just going to get completely roasted. I, I don't think any of the LGD members can deal with that right now. Fofo is going to be similarly strong once he hits 2-3 items as well. LGD, they might be able to give up dragons, but... I wonder if they feel like they have to fight. I actually feel like I would have to if I was in their position. Yeah, and not to put too fine a point on it, it's also just a fantastic anti carthus tool who is where a lot of the scariness is on LGD right now. Barrier blown, not for much there from Kepler 2. Just before that dragon spawns, LGD, more issues for them. Good. Caught onto this tier 2 bot lane. Hydra has done a very good job of bringing that down very low, but into the mid lane we go as a Herald is summoned. And tier 1 falls there, very swiftly indeed. Overcomes the rest of LGD. I wonder how much more W are willing to throw down here. Instead, they just look, we've got the Herald as deep as we can go. We got rid of that tier 1. Now we can turn back towards the Dragon. Yeah, it okay. would be so point for LGD coming if they can right secure it. Now, Jin Zhao, going to have a very difficult time. Camille, who's not ahead of the game, when your team's not ahead of the game, really struggles. Some poke landing from Chao. Maybe some can come in from Kepler as well, but LP... Can also jump forward and return the favor with rapid fire cannon autos. W trying to claim this river and get to a point where they can force LGD once again into a poor front to back. Birdol really struggling, I think, this series to play the front line effectively. That's important. LP, though, eats a lot of damage, and there is still a lot of scary poke. That's a lethality, Callista. There's the Carthus R button that is still going to be a looming threat of chaos. Dragon with spears stuck in. Should be a secure Ooh. for LGD. No, it is not. Meteor has to flash away. And WE just walk in and press R. They press walk smite, in, but, rather. But, but the big thing there is Mark times the tidal wave to make sure that Meteor can't stand there. Because oh. the damage coming through would mean that they would die. Meteor then kind of hopscotches around and can't get the smite and almost dies at the same time. Mark... Pretty much single-handedly winning them that dragon there with a great tidal wave. Watch this again. So the pokes come through. So actually, LGD maybe feel like they can take a fight. But look at this. Meteor is trying to combo up with the rend. They should be winning this because they have the rend on dragon, even though it's uh, the lethality and not the attack speed. But watch this. Walks up, and he can't afford to walk into the tidal wave. And he has to walk back. Very nearly dies the equalizer too. Loses the smite fight. Okay. Back again we go. Jinjo so low. Gets away with it. Down to 10 HP and LP is here to punish. Carthus, the death singer, will be singing his own requiem. Pulls an R button that does so little. Fofo even golds it. Just for the style points. I mean, WE can do no wrong again at this point. LGD had such a cool comp, had such a good lead, and got this Carthus to such a point of power. And it has meant nothing in the fights. Uh, Meteor has been just caught out in the last couple of plays. And we're saying LGD, well, they might want to stall and give up a dragon or two. I think you can see it's going to be a problem the later this game goes as well. W are getting to the point where they can cut off members of LGD so effectively. And uh, again, you've got to look at a couple of key members. I think that Jinjiao and Birdall really struggling to play out this game. The Cassante's not tanky enough. Jinjiao doesn't have the damage on the rest of his team to play Camille in the way that he wants to. Feels like WE, they are now in truly the driver's seat. And it feels like at this point, um, this should be a very, very strong way to close out this game. They'll probably return back to around that Baron, look for one last play, and see if they can force LGD into an unwise contest. Away we go. WE. 
I mean, is there anything they can do wrong at this point with so many two items completed? Yeah, they could. Um, Hell they could, yeah! They could invest <laughs> in multiple, uh, like multiple level marketing schemes. That's what they could do. They could join that's something. What they could do. The, they could join the golden triangle. A pyramid scheme. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, they've got the Zia, right? Like he, he, they've got pyramids in Shiriba, right? That's part yeah, of the that, aesthetic. Yeah, it's probably around there. You know, we'll. Just, That's yeah. what the Ascended are. It's all MLM. Like, That's you two could become an Ascended <laughs> if only you pledge fealty to the throne of Shurima. Shurima, your business manager has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it not a CEO Azir skin? No, 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 no. I feel we like we you 100% have... need fast food Azir. The order is given, and it's, it's given. just it's just, just Shurima and just fried chicken. chicken. It's just oh, that. Be great. Now, that does raise some questions about Azir selling his own... Species as food that that's just not something ginger. I mean, he's been I turned think into you a could have a statement on capitalism and tyranny there That would be great. <laughs> oh my god, you're actually not wrong I thought we'd leave that to pilt over but still looks like Shurim is getting in on it as well We're looking forward to arcane season two. <laughs> Oh Dear pilt over and zord. What a wonderfully messed up dichotomy yeah. Dude way to baron we go well, they got chunked out. They've had to reset, which means that Jinja's not here for snap engage. They don't have flashes on Meteor and Jinja. That's going to make their lives very, very difficult. Kepler's not in position either. Has to be killing Cannon Minion. They're looking towards the Baron. They don't have a flash over the wall for Meteor. Jinja goes in. The Hextech Ultimatives have not found that much value this game, but he's so deep. Gets pulled out with a Fate's Call. And that will pull WE off the Baron. And they will still have their uh, Fo -fo? resist reduced Fo -fo. by the Baron. Fofo -fo goes cold and stays alive for now. Got very close to Deed Hong. Has to pop ultimate as well. WE do get out alive. Okay. But now, actually, with the resets, the WE, sorry, LGD think they can maybe. They want to take mid lane nope. out of turret. They want to yeah, take that's that. Fair. That's the easy one. They could have burned Baron, maybe. Of course, Carter's very quick at doing that. LGD, they get a huge win comparative to what they should have had at that moment. The big ultimates from WE, namely the Tidal Wave and the Equalizer, don't get huge value. Problem here, LGD don't quite get that mid lane out of turret. If they've been able to break that, I feel like their setup for the next dragon spawning in 40 seconds would have been so much more easy. As we come through to that dragon, though, what cooldowns are going to be available? They won't have the Callista ultimate. That's going to make Jinjo's life basically um, unplayable in this next fight. He needs that Callista ult to fly in and then fly out at the same time. Meteor should at least have a bit more cooldown reduction on his ult, but I don't even think that'll be up in time for the dragon spawn itself, which means that LGD might have to just give that one over. Okay. That could still end up being very difficult to manage. Of course, Soul Point, a Mountain Soul, would be very nice for LGD if they can get towards it. But they had that last dragon denied off that fantastic tidal wave from Mark and all of those things we've already covered. And WE still in a great position. Three items on the Lucian. LP playing this game out yeah. excellently well. You are doing just fine here. But you have got two items, you know, on, on the Jace, on the mm -hmm. Callista. This Carthus is still Giga farming. It's not like LGD don't have options. They've no. just been a little bit unclean in the execution, but the Carthus so, is still going to Giga scale. There's still going to be this threat in the background. Yeah, so they still have the play. They, they can still play through Poke. And you're right for saying that. There is no true tank on the side of WE. They do have some sustain, though, from Mark's and Army, which will mitigate some of that. LGD, they're clearing vision around this top side. They can't stay here too long. Where LGD can win in Poke, they can't win in the straight 5v5s. Hi Chow, gonna take himself that top lane out of turret. That's nice of extra bit of gold for him. It opens up the map a little bit more, but this mid lane out of turret is making these objectives so hard to approach for LGD. And that's gonna make it even harder for them to get that poke that they need. They have slowed down the game further than I thought they might be able to. But as you said, WE still in a good position. Nonetheless, I guess the bonus is that Shinsai is starting to lose a lot of value at this point compared to the Carthus. We've seen Meteor just throw out ults just to get good damage, and I think that's a rel that's a relatively useful thing to do. I'm almost surprised he didn't even go towards something like um, Malignant's coming up as that third item. He's going towards the Void Staff instead. I think that maybe just having more ults on more cooldown would have worked better. Yeah, I think there's been a bit of an interesting debate, because we saw a, a Carthus last night in NLC, and they went for first strike... Malignant's Horizon Focus just to really spam out right. lots and get huge value out of that. And I think there probably is a little bit of debate exactly what items you want to pull on the Carthus. A part of why that Carthus is feeling so good right now is you have actually got a few ways you can build them. You can go towards loads of the burn items. You can go towards the first strike, the Dark Harvest. You can go towards the Malignant's. So I, I do think there is kind of that flexibility in choice. Mm. I do kind of wonder whether the Malignant's might have made some sense, but as 
opted into the blighting duel, likely a void yeah, staff third, and I do we've think that makes some that sense. One. So well, I, the decision what, make, mm. the decision making does make some sense at least. Yeah, I just don't think there's enough magic resist to justify it at this point. I think more ults are just more useful to denying more fights. LGD, I think they can just use common um, cast cells as a deterrence tool, and they don't have many of them. That's one of the big things. It kind of can add in towards that poke. Of course, that's the big thing which LGD are doing. Well, I think one of the ways that they can win is a couple of shock blasts, maybe a Callista Q on one target. Karthus finishes them off. There's a Zonius and Fofo. We've seen him pull that. Unwisely in one case, but he's pulled it a couple of times to avoid that one. Dragon spawning in three minutes, Baron already up, so there's only one side of the map to focus on from both these teams. WE, they haven't been able to get vision dominance over topside. Mm. LGD, they kind of gave up a couple of objectives in a row just to get that um, um, kind of vision control towards topside. I suppose one extra thing to point out as well, the two Mountain Dragons from WE do actually help a decent amount in regards to that poke, and maybe that's part of the reasoning between that voice staff we talked about so much. Baron going down, LGD, they are blind on the approach, they're taking down the Azir turret, and they will not be there in time for this! Oh, the gold's that's cancelled interrupt. as well! Oh, Mark! That is just exquisite! I don't even think that was on vision, that was just good instinct. And now LP unleashes... The chunk back is good, but Baron is down, and WE are laughing their way to the bank. Oh, Meteor. He has just been absolutely turbo-smurfed on by Mark. We talk about him being the engage-only player, but I think his series today has been really good. Hychow is over the wall looking for some poke, but with the Baron buff now in, and with the ultimate available from Wayward 2, LGD might be uh, defending their net inhibitor turrets sooner rather than later. It felt like the game was stalling just a little bit. Oh, like that Carthus was continuing to loom in the background as a threat that was growing. The third items are beginning to come on in. The poke was hitting, and then a Baron like that happens, and WE are right back where they were. Yeah, and LGD, they've just struggled in their execution. It feels like this composition does have tools to play on. We talked about that a lot. I like the fact that Kepler has the Axie mark now. That'll make it easier for them yep. to have um, more ultimate cooldown. Uh, for the Callista to allow Jinja to play the game. God, he's had a hard time with things with this Camille. It has not snowballed. Mm -hmm. But LGD, they've really struggled to land the poke in a timely enough fashion to win out some of these objectives. And it has meant that W have just continually pushed forward to force. It's 29 and a half minutes. Still have that fucking mid lane out of turret. It is so hard for LGD to approach that side of the map. And then you are in the position now with the Baron, with the shove, with the vision control that walking through your own jungle is such a chore. And a third mountain dragon makes that poke that much less effective. Birdol W's to buy some space. LP does take a little bit of poke Both there. Isn't that? That's what they were looking for. I think they were looking to see if they could find a brief moment of all-in before the Azir came in. Now he will be there. Jinjiao, he's gonna get caught. Oh, it's just take it out before anything like a Fates Call can be used. The Equalizer splits the lane. Meteor flashes into everyone to try and get some value because he knows he wasn't getting out. Bresses are. Gets a bit of a chunk, but no one's dying. Wayward might finally fall, but Hunger's Flash is on forwards. There'll be a three talent strike. Bernal finally falls, but not before taking a few people with him. And it's just a collapse at the end of the game. It felt like there were tools, but WE have dismantled them. They've unscrewed the mechanism. And LGD fall apart. There were some bright moments, but that is just about it. WE, when they are ahead in games, are clinical. That is what we've learned about this team. And uh, the team, the artists formerly known as World Elite, will start off 2-0 in the group stage. Might not be World quite yet, but they have had a bit of an Elite series. It's a long way from panic, desperation flashing on Shinzao. Every moment... There was a team fight involved. It was WEE who were ruling the game. 2-0, commanding fashion. LGD, back to the drawing board. That is not what they were hoping for. In front of the home crowd as well. W this time. They won't always be playing in front of that arena and that audience in the, in the group stage this time. It has been uh, the change of the formats mean that we do have some of these teams going on to some away games as well. But WE, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing how this team can go forwards in the group stage. I think that the weakness of this team before was a very, very easily tiltable uh, bot lane. You know, mm -hmm. I think that Prince was a failed project for them last split. I think that Stay as an LDL player did well given this situation, but wasn't what the team needed to be elite either. Last split, Team WE should have been a top four team, but they collapsed right at the end of it. If this is how Mark and LP are gonna be playing, the question opens up again, can they repeat that same kind of feat? It's harder to do so in the new format to kind of... You don't get to avoid any teams that way, right, at all. Um, 
in terms of getting towards those top spots and towards those playoffs as well. I'm really looking forward to see how far this team can go. I love the way they play. Methodical. They are 